Good morning. So let's get started right into Fire Cares. Fire Cares stands for its Fire Community Assessment and Risk Evaluation System. So we want to go through some of the details of that system that is being built, as Pat said, based on the residential and the high-rise studies that I hope you're all familiar with at this point. If not, we've got lots of materials out in the exhibit hall for you on that. The basic premise of all of the work that we've been doing now for about 10 years uh, with the field research, looking at crew size response to these different types of hazards and risk are based on the core values of the fire service. And these are things that we are all familiar with, like preparedness, right, prevention, then that response and mitigation that is all part of when those risk events do occur. So we try to prevent fire. We do what we can uh, to educate the public. And yet when these incidences occur, we have to respond. And we have to respond with sufficient resources to be able to handle the event at hand. And so that's the premise that sets the stage for the Fire Cares project. I want you to pay particular attention to those three words at the bottom of that slide, safe, efficient, and effective. That's always the description that we want in any kind of response. Those are the criteria by which we judge the response capability, the reliability, and the operational effectiveness once you arrive. And so safe, efficient, effective are our driving uh, criteria for all of our responses. And so as you all know, and many of you are still experiencing, a lot of the economic impact that we have from 2008, and some of you even before that, a lot of it lingers today, but during that period until now, we've had decision makers making cuts to a lot of the resources without any idea of the impact of the cuts that they were making. Whether it was a brownout situation, whether it was a crew size reduction, a station closure, or even just a company closure, but the house remained open, these are decisions that have impact or ramifications for your capability to respond. Remember the three criteria, right? Safe, efficient, and effective. And so without that kind of understanding, these cuts were made on an economic basis. And so we have to have some way to advise or to be able to have better information to our decision makers. And again, that's the premise of the Fire Cares project. So the idea is here that we have a risk, a hazard level that is in all of your communities. Some of you are in very high hazard, high risk communities. Others of you more moderate or medium risk. And then we have some that are more in the very suburban or even um, borderline rural areas that are very low risk. Some of you have communities that will encompass all three risk levels. And so it's about matching the resources that are deployed to the risk level of your communities. We're hoping for a time when we can have enough science, and that's where we are, is on the borderline of having enough science that we're looking at it from a neighborhood perspective, not your community. So it may be that in the future your departments will staff based on the risk level in the neighborhood of a station. So if you're in the urban core, you will staff those crews with five or six. But in your more suburban core, maybe the minimum or the optimal crew size is four. And so this is the science that's behind the work that is involved in fire cares. And I want you to think about those three bullets on this slide because in everything that you respond to, there are always three outcomes. It could be positive, could be negative, but there are always three outcomes. Firefighter injury and death, civilian injury and death, and property loss. Positive or negative, those are the three outcomes that always occur in everything that you respond to from a fire perspective. And so those are the outcomes that we want to remember as we walk through this because everything that we do will have that type of ramification on basing, basing whether we match well the resources deployed to the risk level of the event potential in your communities. You know, that whole concept, many of you have probably heard of the standards of response cover, right? Or just standards of cover is for short. And that's just basically how do we deploy the resources we deploy in our community? How do we send out the resources that are deployed? What kind of apparatus, how many of them, and what kind of crew size are on them, and how the crew is trained? So that's your standards of cover. Does it match well then the risk level in your community? 
So the basic is if you have good, let's just deal with response time. If we've got good geographic coverage, so we have good response times, the stations are located appropriately to cover their first due areas, then we're going to have likely positive outcomes. If we have uh, long response times, or even if we have high enough volume that you're responding second due a lot, then we've extended our response time. You have to remember what's happening in the risk event. Until you arrive, things are continuing to escalate, right? And so we have to deal with those kinds of mismatches. And so that's an indicator of perhaps insufficient resources deployed. So with all of those, we can sort of categorize the responses into these three categories. Your response availability and reliability, are you readily available? Do you have enough to, be de to deploy immediately with all of the resources necessary in a timely manner? Right? What's your capability once you arrive? How are the people trained? How are your, your members of the department trained? Are they trained and drilled enough to the level that they can respond appropriately to the event before them? And then what do they do once they show up? Is that operational perfect, uh, uh, effectiveness, right? Do they know the tactics? Are they practicing them well? So what do you do once you show up? All of these things matter in that matching resources to risk. And so as we look through these categorically, again, that's the premise of the system that we're building. So when you're avail uh, evaluating this current capability that you have versus matching for or measuring the impact of some change. Remember, the decision makers are making changes without any knowledge of the potential impact. Here are the things they're considering. They are saying, well, can I, uh, what about risk management? Can we do more prevention? Can we do more public education? What if I manage risk better? You know, that's a little less expensive, perhaps, than deploying more resources. So they're going to balance that against the resource deployment or this response and mitigation of an event. And so when they deal with that, then the outcome of that decision or that balancing is the acceptable level of risk, right? What risk level am I willing to accept that I'm going to have a bad outcome in one of those three areas? Firefighter injury and death, civilian injury and death, and property loss. I'm going to play the odds or I'm not going to play the odds. What can we give them to better inform that decision making? That's the premise of what we're building. And so with that, we look at the hazards and risk in a community. All of those exist. You have structures. You have population demographics that matter and contribute to the cause and the, uh, the implication of fire. And so given those um, risk and hazards that exist, how well do we match the resource deployment to have good outcomes? in these situations. And so it becomes very simple in concept, not so much in detail, but in concept if we do it well, given a risk level, if I send too few resources, then I'm gonna have bad outcomes. Firefighter injury and death, civilian injury and death, and property loss. If I do it well, then I'm gonna have good outcomes. All right, same thing, firefighter injury and death reduced, civilian injury and death reduced, property loss reduced. And so it's that match that matters. And that's what is, uh, again, the premise of what we're building. So if we match resources to risk, our outcomes can be different than they are today. So fire cares, the community assessment, response evaluation system. This is the same study team, as you heard earlier, that has done the uh, residential and the high-rise experiments, a lot of the EMS work as well. Uh, we are funded by the AFG and we're always very grateful uh, to the AFG and the Grants Administration folks because they get it. They understand uh, how important these kinds of studies are. And then, of course, I want to tell you about the project because um, the DOD came into play here. That's the Department of Defense, uh, the U.S. Department of Def Defense, because they had a project that was a little parallel to what we're doing. And the programmers that were working on something called Rogue actually had already built a geographic database that became sort of the pot that's going to hold the data that I'm going to tell you about now. And so that uh, role became significant in this project. Fire Cares is a system that is using big data. Have you ever heard that term? Big data are data sets that exist for all types of purposes. 
real estate databases, public health databases, all sorts of things that exist in the world that really have nothing to do directly with what we, uh, with fire prevention or fire um, uh, mitigation, risk response and mitigation. But if we pull them together, they can help us tell the story of your risks and of your response capability. And so that's what we're doing. We are grabbing big data sets from all types of databases and pulling them into the same holding pot, we'll call it, the same massive data system to be able to do these sorts of assessments. One of the other things is that we're doing is pulling in a, a part of the uh, building footprints. They're all being categorized into these three categories. High hazard occupancies, medium, and low hazard occupancies. You're familiar with the NFPA standards, I'm sure, on these three definitions. And so we're categorizing the structures in your communities into three, these three categories. So all of that's being input into the database. These data layers are gonna allow you at the uh, local level to add your own data as well. If you've got your hydrant information or if we can help you find that, we're gonna load that in. And you can load in your inspection reports. Imagine being able to look at your inspection reports and match that with your responses and be able to tell a story for years about where you have done citations perhaps on, uh, perhaps on inspections and then had to respond there for a fire event when they had been cited so many times. So these are the kinds of stories that change your risk story that we'll be able to tell using this data. The other thing that we'll be able to do in fire cares is calculate three categories of scores. These three scores are basically the big categories that I've told you already. The first is going to be your risk score. The community risk score will be a score that will stand alone, right? You don't even have to use it in conjunction with the others. It'll stand alone. Your risks are what they are. Right, your infrastructure, your buildings, your population, and it may change over time, but it changes at a glacial speed. All right, so risk exists, and that score will be very telling for you. And the other score we'll be able to do is your fire department performance score. How well do you respond to a risk event that occurs? How well do you respond to fire? Right, what is your capability? How well do you get there? How well do you mitigate the event? And then there is the safe grade. Now, I want you all to learn this term. Safe grade. How many have been on real estate databases where you can, you go in and it'll tell you maybe a walking score or a, a driving score, right? So you know more about the neighborhoods or even a school score or maybe a crime rate score, right? You're familiar with those. Well, this is the same concept. We want you to begin to know what's your safe grade. That's why if you've been to the booth, this is sort of our logo. It's become sort of the, uh, the underlying motto, if you will, of fire cares. What's your safe grade? Because what that is, it's telling the story of the match, your risk level to your response capability, All right? So matching risks or response to the risk, that's your safe grade. So we're going to take those two, first two scores, match them, and see how well they match up. That tells your story. That tells the story about your community, your department. And now decision makers can begin to understand some of the details that you need to have before you start slashing fire department resources. So to give you a little more information on that, we're also going to be building a dashboard that will allow then your fire chiefs, you decision makers, to be able to kind of tweak some of these things. What happens if I change crew size? What happens if I build a new station? Does it affect my overall capability to respond? Does it matter to the safe grade? And so we're building this dashboard, and over the coming years, this will be uh, tested and tweaked even further. So now what I'd like to do is be able to, uh, to bring up Ray and Craig, and they're going to tell you a little more in detail about these three scores. So Ray, if you will come for the risk score. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Lori had pointed out, we were talking about two scores, the community risk score and the fire department performance score. Right now, I'm going to talk to you in detail about the community risk score. So if we look back to our or your core values, there's a key word in there, and that's preparedness. 
So it's easy to understand on an incident by incident uh, basis what you need to be prepared. For example, if you have a high rise in your first due, you know that you're gonna carry equipment that is used strictly for high rise firefighting. But what we're looking to do here for fire cares is look at that on a, an entire department level. So when we talk about community risk, we are talking about the risks presented to your department in terms of the expected number of fires and the likelihood for injury and death of civilians. The community risk that we're gonna calculate is gonna be based on three things. Your socio-demographic profile for your, for your community, the residential structural profile, and the pattern and number of residential fires to which you've responded in the past. To give you a little bit more information on how we break down these three items, first we'll start with the socio-demographic profile. Some of these are very obvious to how they affect um, fires in terms of population size. We know larger populations tend to have more fires. Age, we have two categories such as the very young or the very old where we know that they are more prone to injury or death in fire events. Sex, believe it or not guys, you're more susceptible on a large scale to uh, bad outcomes in fire. Ethnicity, median, in, uh, median income, your social vulnerability index, and the percentage of adult smokers. These all affect uh, the risk that your community has in a fire event. The second part is your residential structural profile. The first step that we're looking at here in the Fire Cares program is, is we're focusing on residential fires. So when we look at what affects those occurrence of residential fires, we have the number of overall housing units within your, uh, your community, the age of the buildings. We know that over time the technology and protection systems have changed. Um, your number of households with more people than rooms, the number of vacant houses, your heating fuel source, your number of renters within your community, and the overall density of residential structures within blocks of your community. By looking at those two profiles, your socio-demographic and your residential structural, you'll notice that none of those had anything to do with your fire department. Those are strictly properties of the community. So it's important to understand that the community risk score that we talk about is independent of what you are doing or how you are performing. This means that there's nothing you can do relatively to affect your community risk score. It's a relatively static number. So as we go through, we take in all these these pieces of information and we're gonna calculate risk attributes. This is your total number of residential fires, the percentage of fires that go beyond the room of origin, percentage of fires that go beyond the structure of origin, the number of injuries resulting from residential fires, and the number of deaths resulting from residential fires. We, at this time, we take all the information in at the census tract level but we are computing your community risk score at the governmental unit. As years go by and as we um, refine our algorithms for calculating this, it will eventually get down to the individual census tract, but right now we are going to present to you a score on your entire community level. By taking in these five risk attributes, we then aggregate and calculate three community risk scores. This is your risk for fires, your risk of fire spread, and your risk for injuries and deaths. Uh, Dr. Moore had mentioned this idea of big data and she gave you a couple of examples. What we have listed here is this is the actual big data that we're pulling in and we're sampling off of to calculate this score. We have your ENFERS data. We have census data, American Community Survey, your social vulnerability, your building inventory. That's floor plans, that's number of rooms, that's the overall structure, high, medium, low hazards. 
You have your big uh, data on adult smokers, that's at the state level. And we have your GIS information for your community. One of the things I want to highlight quickly is ENFERS data. Everyone is very familiar with ENFERS. That's that thing you have to report every time you respond to a fire. Because of incomplete or missing data, whether that's the type of run you had, whether the fire spread, whether or not you categorized that correctly, if you included a proper address for where the incident was, by missing those small pieces of information, that affects the data that we can then use. Overall, missing information led to a loss of 20% of the ENFERS reports. So one of the things we want to stress here is that we want to use your data, but that relies on you properly and completely filling out those ENFERS reports. And we'll talk a little bit later about another project that's going on to help with that issue. Okay, so when we calculate your community risk score, we then take a look at how your score compares to other communities that are similar to yours. And Dr. Weinschenk will also talk about the fire department performance score, and that's the same thing. We're gonna compare you to similar communities and similar departments. To begin binning where your department is, we looked at NFPA standards for the area of the country and for the size of the community that you protect. Now I know that this is a really big table, I'm not expecting you to uh, memorize numbers or have to pass any tests later on this, but what I wanna show is that we broke down your communities into 10 sizes. Size one, which ranges from zero to 2,500 people, up to size 10, which is one million or more. The reason I brought this up to show you is that for department size one through three, there isn't enough data at this time for us to do a formal analysis of your risk. So those three sizes have been excluded from this first pass of analysis. Also, if you look at size 10, there are only 14 of these size departments and size communities across the country. So those are all gonna be compared across just size 10. For every other size, your size and your region is what you're gonna be compared against. So again, we went just reiterating what we're talking about with, with the community risk scores. We have one, your fire risk, two is your risk of fire spread, and three is your death and injury risk. So when you go on to the fire care system, and if you haven't already visited the booth, the booth I believe will be open for a little while after um, this, this morning session, you'll see that the dashboard has three icons that go with your score. That's low, medium, and high. If you have a low score, it means that the score we, can, we calculated for your department falls in the bottom 25%. If you get a high score, it means that you're in the top 25% for risk. And if you're medium, you're somewhere in the middle 50%. And again, that's when we compare you against like departments. The dashboard of the fire care system, again, I encourage you to come out and take a look at it at the booth. You'll see your three scores and a little description of what each score means, whether it's your fire risk score, your uh, risk for fire spread, or your death and injury risk. And now to explain the second part, the fire department score, I invite Dr. Weinchenk up. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Lori. Um, so I'm going to talk about for firefighter performance or fire department performance and what does this actually mean. So the goal of the, department, the fire department performance score is to assess how well a fire department performs well uh, compared to a standardized or idealized version of itself. Um, I know that's kind of a funny phrase, but, and I'll get to it in, in, a, in a few short slides what we actually mean by this phrase. But a lot of um, data exists in terms of how we govern a fire department, in terms of what standards we should follow, such as NFPA 1710. We've also conducted several studies uh, prior to this study with the same team, the uh, fire ground studies, the residential and high-rise studies. So those kind of go into how we define uh, firefighter performance or fire department performance as well. And then GIS, which is a, a growing field and very common in the fire service in terms of assessing travel times. So all those kind of features come into play in terms of how we assess 
um, this standardized or idealized fire department. But the first thing we want to do is determine how well you perform as you exist now. So we need some baseline comparison. So that's kind of the foundation of this, is using ENFERS data, which as Ray talked about earlier, is, is um, a difficult challenge. Um, we rely heavily on your reported data. So the, the better quality, the more frequently that you fill this out to the best um, of your ability, the better we have in terms of input data for our models. And so what we wanted to do, or the foundation of this, is the fire spread category. And so in ENFERS, there's five categories. Typically, there's room of or object of origin, room of origin, floor of origin, um, beyond floor of origin, or structure of origin, and then beyond structure. And so one of the things we did was, in terms of a data integrity uh, point of view, was to collapse some of those down. So we actually um, took those five categories and brought them down to three. So we collapsed um, room and object to just room of origin, floor and structure to floor of origin, and then beyond structure, structure we left as itself. And so what this allows us to do is kind of build a distribution of how well your fire department performs. And so there should be, at the end of the day, it depends upon how, length, how long the length of time we analyze, but we have some distribution in terms of how many fires exist in your room of origin, how many fires exist that, that spread to the floor and beyond, and then how many went beyond the structure. So this kind of gives us a baseline in terms of how many fires fit in these different categories. and allows us then to compare um, when we look at our idealized fire department. So our, our idealized fire department is, is we developed this concept, or this concept exists, that there is a department or a version of your department where all the responses meet or exceed the national standards or recommendations governing department performance. And so the way we, we break this down is a series of tasks. And all these tasks can be thought of as functions of time. So from the residential and fire ground studies, we saw that it takes X amount of time to complete a certain task, depending upon crew size, depending upon um, the arrival uh, functions that you guys have, whether it's a, um, a short time or a long time, or the number of units arrive, how long it takes to get a particular number of firefighters on the fire ground, all of these things start to come into play when we look at performance. And so we broke it down into five main categories. Time to alarm, time to dispatch, time to turnout, time to arrival, and time to suppress. So time to alarm, dispatch, and turnout are all kind of based on either the, the NIST uh, technical note studies that we did for the residential and high-rise studies, or NFPA 1710. The time to arrival is also based on 1710, but it can also be thought of as GIS. And so when we, we think about the NFPA standard, it's 90% it's of your call should be four minutes or less. The other thing we can do is we can map your entire community in GIS. So for every given station to every single house, residential or high-rise um, structure in your entire community, we can tell you how long it would take you to, to get to get to that structure. So we get a distribution of times. How long did it take to get to any random structure within your community? And that gives us our time to arrival. And then your time to suppress can be thought of all of the other actions. So from the time you get there, from wheel stop to water on fire, that's our time to suppress. And we're basing that time on the NIST technical notes from the residential and high-rise studies. So that's our, our low um, hazard, as Lori talked about, and our high hazard structures. And we're working on the medium hazard as well. And so depending upon crew size, we know from those studies that those water on fire times or that time to suppress changes. So now this gives us some, some options, and, and you guys some options. If you were to change your crew size in our, in our software, how would that impact your idealized department? You can see now how if you had one extra firefighter, your time to suppress might be faster. Will that distinctly change how your fires end up in those bins? And so what we want to do then is you know, kind of develop this, this um, idealized department model. And so what we say is we've got a sum of times. So all those times that I just mentioned all sum up to a, a T growth. So that's how big was the fire by the time we put water on the fire. And in our idealized world, as soon as we put water on the fire, the fire stops growing. And I know that's exactly how it happens all the time on the fire ground as well. And so um, in this um, idealized sense, you know, here's, here's my, my, my graphic that says, you know, as, as fire ground time increases, the fire's getting bigger. And then as the, uh, we want to know how big that fire is um, when we put water on the fire. And that fire size essentially lumps into those same three categories that we saw before for our actual. So we've got some distribution of fire sizes. We've got a room of origin, floor of origin, beyond structure again. And so when we look at these two different distributions, we say, okay, well, how can we relate them? How can we compare our idealized version to the actual version? And so we came up with this time correction. So we say that there exists some time that can be added that assesses the difference between these two outcomes. And so this time, on average, gives us our fire department performance score. It's how often, on average, do you exceed or meet um, the idealized version of yourself. And so this is going to be the graphic that exists on the Fire Care's website. And so that 16 there says, 
on average 16 seconds, um, you're beyond the, the uh, idealized version of yourself. And so what we do is we compare that to like departments um, in your population class like had Ray had talked about earlier. And so you can see the minimum score, the maximum score for those departments that are very similar to you. And then we give you kind of this color um, coding as well that tells you whether you're in your top 25%, the bottom 25%, or somewhere in the middle. And so this gives you an assessment or, or an understanding of where you fit well relative to your peers in terms of your performance. And it also gives you an actual number. So it tells you on average how long you are above uh, the idealized version of yourself or the standardized version of yourself. And right now we're operating on the community scale level like Ray had talked about earlier. But we hope to bring this down to all the, the fire stations. So you can see if there's a different fire station or if you move fire stations around, how that would impact your, your performance score. So you start to get this tool now that we can see if we start to make changes in the department, how this might affect our overall performance. And you can see it both on this. As, as we move forward into this grant and future work, we'll be able to see it at the, the um, firehouse station or firehouse level as well as the community level. And how do we put this all together? How do we relate fire department performance and community risk? Well, that's our safe grades. And as Ray had talked about, and we've kind of stressed, there's these three important categories. The number of fires, how big the fires get, and then the likelihood for injury and death. So we're, we're breaking down our safe grade comparisons into those three categories. We're also providing uh, the raw number predictions. So how many fires might you expect? How many deaths might you expect uh, based on this historical data and based on your end first date and based on all this information that we're gathering and putting together? And so when we start to generate these safe grades, and we're pulling in both our community size, so we're looking at those, those population classes in those regions, we're looking at, at your community risk, and then we're looking at your fire department score. And so these safe grades, um, very much like uh, the community risk scale, and, and much like how we color our um, performance scale, is broken into three categories, good, fair, and poor. Good is you're operating in, in the top 25% compared to your peers or compared to the national average. Bears, you're in that middle 50%, between 25 and 75%. And poor means you're in the bottom 25%, or there's 75% of the departments are better than you in terms of your safe grade. And so what does this actually look like? So the first one here is we're, we're, we've got a performance score or a community risk score, uh, your safe grade based on um, your performance relative to your peers in the number of fires. So here's a fair assessment. And so again, this is in the middle 50% in terms of your, your safe grade. And so as we proceed through, we have one here for um, your peers. And so this is in the same classification based on risk. So in the medium risk scale, for the likelihood of the number of fires, you have a fair performance. So that's your safe grade. And as we continue, we have a high risk category, for example. And this is on their fire spread risk. So how big are your fires getting? So in this high risk area, how well are you performing in terms of your fire spread? And again, this is a fair comparison. We also have poor, so not everyone is in this middle 50%. Uh, there are good, there are fair, and there are poor, and I encourage you to check out your department. I mean, all these models are still improving and changing, but all this information is built. Just come by the booth, talk to us. A lot of this is dependent upon the data we have. So the better data we have, the more data we get, the more informed our models become, the better our predictions can be. And so here's a, a comparison for a medium risk based on uh, death and injury. In addition to the comparisons, we also have the national average. So how well do you perform relative to everyone? And so this gives you an assessment both on your similar profile in terms of population size and risk categories, as well as on the national average. So we have all of these categories broken down uh, for all the different scenarios, those five kind of key categories that we've been talking about. And then we also have your raw numbers. So here's where data comes into play. So we're predicting uh, 867 um, fires in this community. Over the last three years, this community averaged about 1,089. Did a lot of change in this, in this community? We're not sure. But we're dependent upon the data. So if we look at, start looking at the NFIRST data, if you, you can send us your actual data if it's independent of NFIRST, we'll take it all. We want the data. That helps us inform our models and our scores. And so the better we get, the more informed our, our models get, the more confidence we have in giving you these predictions. And so kind of to wrap up a lot of uh, what we just talked about, there's a, a short movie we put together that hopefully clarifies all the different pieces we've talked about. Um, and that'll, that'll show in one minute. But here's, here's the first thing I wanted to show is this is what your landing page is going to look like. Um, so this is an example for the city of Detroit. It gives you your fire department performance score on the top right. And then it gives you your map. You can have all your station IDs in. 
And as you scroll down the page, and, and I encourage everyone again to go to the booth and check it out, you'll see all your community risk scales, you'll, scores. You'll see your performance scores. You'll see your safe grades. All this information is there. Um, and I encourage you to talk with all the developers. Almost the entire team is here today and will be around the booth this afternoon. Uh, come ask questions. And now uh, the short video should play. Fire department leaders all share the same core values to protect lives and property through preparedness, prevention, public education, and emergency response, and maintain quality services by being efficient, effective, and safe. These core values can be affected by economic decline, geographic expansion, annexation, and regionalization. Under these circumstances, political officials and other decision makers often alter fire department resources faster than fire chiefs can evaluate the impact. In order to effectively manage a fire department, leaders must be able to demonstrate how changes to resources will affect community outcomes. These outcomes must be addressed in three important areas, civilian injury and death, firefighter injury and death, and property loss. Fire chiefs and others must assess the array of risks or hazards in their community, as well as the fire department resources needed to respond to incidents involving those risks. Once the details of risks, hazards are known, fire department leaders can plan and deploy sufficient resources to manage the risk or to respond and mitigate an incident involving the risk. Fire Cares, the Fire Community Assessment Response Evaluation System, is a tool that is being developed that aids in community risk assessment and resource deployment. And having this tool at your fingertips assists fire department leaders to properly match the allocation of resources to the risk profile of the community, providing the best chance for successful outcomes. Fire Cares is a GIS-based tool that incorporates big data layers that are invaluable to assessing risks. These big data layers include building footprints, housing and mobile home units, public health data, census data, including vulnerable population over 65 and under 17, and more than 11 years of structure fire and related injury and death information. The building or structural data will be categorized according to the NFPA Fire Protection Handbook, which defines hazard levels by occupancy type. High hazard occupancies, high-rise buildings, hospitals, schools, nursing homes, explosive plants, refineries, and other large fire potential occupancies. Medium hazard occupancies, apartments, offices, and mercantile or industrial occupancies that may require extensive use of firefighting forces. And finally, low hazard occupancies, one, two, or three family dwellings, and scattered small business and industrial occupancies. All of these layers are being compiled to build the risk profile for fire departments. Fire Cares will also allow fire department response data to be added to the system. The system already includes a national fire station layer with locations preloaded into the system. By selecting a station from your community data set, fire chiefs will be able to first check if their station is located properly and then add the response resources deployed from that station. Fire Cares will also allow other response-related data to be added to the system, like hydrant locations and inspection reports. Based on the layers of big data contained in the system, Fire Cares will have the capability to calculate three meaningful scores. The Community Risk Score is based on the known risks that contribute to the consequence of structure fires, including population demographics, building materials, and occupancy type. Each community will have risk scores designated by their government unit, like a city or a county. This score will be presented as three separate scores. One, number of fires predicted. Two, predicted proportion of fires that spread beyond room of origin. And three, predicted number of fire-related injuries and deaths. Next is the Fire Department Performance Score. This score will illustrate whether current performance of the department is above or below industry standard objectives, such as those found in NFPA Standard 1710. 
This score will be presented as a gauge representing how a department compares to other fire departments in communities with similar population. And finally, the SAFE grade, which is a comparison of the fire department resource capability performance with the community risk scores. The SAFE grade represents the possibility of civilian injury or death, firefighter injury or death, and or property loss based on how well the fire department resources are deployed to match the level of risks in a structure fire. The SAFE grade will be presented as a series of scores, including fire department performance compared to departments in areas of similar populations and risks, and as a national comparison. In order for fire chiefs and decision makers to assess possible changes to some of the factors that could improve the overall community safe grade, fire cares will continue to be built, tested, and enhanced, including the addition of a dashboard feature showing the components that contribute to the three scores. Using the dashboard, response components can be changed in theory to show impact before any response component is actually changed in the department. This feature alone will provide the opportunity to assess proposed changes and their impact without using trial and error in the street. Fire Cares. Do you know your safe grade? So just to bring all of this to a conclusion for you, I want to make sure that you recognize several things. On the screen now, what you see is the uh, logo from our original studies, the residential high-rise. You see the Firefighter Safety and Deployment Study logo. It's really important that you understand that we have several projects going in parallel, and they're all linked because this matters. As you heard both Ray and Craig mention the data that are imputed into the system in your infers data, um, that you all have to fill out the reports after a fire, those data unfortunately are so bad that it's very difficult for us to pull together um, enough information to inform the model, which is why we said we want to work with you, get your actual department data into the system. However, we are working on a parallel project called INFORS. This is the National Fire Operating Reporting System. This will contain operational data it is our goal to stand this up as the next national database for fire. It's very important that you see the logo matches. Anywhere you see that logo with the, the firefighter and the flames, it is related to this study team and this project. And so in force, uh, we're going to be coming to some of your departments saying we'd like for you to begin imputing your fire data into this system rather than infers, okay? And so we're going to be looking at this. It's being talked about at the uh, International Fire Chiefs meeting this week as well. And many are referring to this infers as the next generation of infers, okay? And so it to become the next national fire database. And so we're in that period of learning and transitioning, but I want you all to know about it because I want you to go back home and talk to your chiefs about it. I want you to go back home and talk about this amongst yourselves because it is that, that data that is going to be critical to telling your story using the fire cares system. And then one of the, uh, the other things I want to relate to you is that once we have the inverse data, the more operational data we have, accurate data, it will feed right into fire cares. Our programmers are talking to each other. And so these projects are going in parallel. They're being built in parallel so that they can talk to each other. So as you begin to enter your operational data into Enforce, it will feed into fire cares for further analysis. Enforce will stand alone as well, but it will also feed into fire cares and then they can talk to each other. So these reports will go back and forth. Fire, uh, Enforce will be able to draw the geographic data out of fire cares. And so this whole system going forward, um, we're all testing in the next year. So be ready. I hope you'll be supportive of this when we come in to your department to say, we're ready to implement these, these systems. Will you help us test it? 
It's going to be much simpler than the data entered into infers, a lot more like a TurboTax kind of thing, uh, very intuitive, a lot of downloads of data, as you can see, rather than you having to impute uh, a lot of the information. So please recognize these um, and that logo, anywhere you see the logo, you know it's related to these studies and uh, all of the, the study team. And if you'll indulge me, I just really want to introduce a couple of people. You've met Ray and Craig. We have some of the most brilliant minds on this study team um, that I've ever been around. So I've asked them um, this morning if they would just stand. Um, I want to introduce uh, DK. I'm just going to call first names. DK and Austin from University of Texas. We also have uh, Cyrus and Tyler, who I call our white hat hackers. Um, they're from Prominent Edge. They came, uh, we found them at the DOD. Phenomenal people. Um, we've got uh, Rob and Doug, and I don't think they're here, Urban Institute or our statisticians. Um, uh, Stanley and Dave from NIST, economist, believe it or not. So we've got all kinds of people. And last but not least, uh, the IFF's own GIS analysts, Yelena, Luke, and Tom. And I don't know if they're in here, but phenomenal. And you know they work for you all the time. So if you could just give uh, my study team a hand. They really have worked hard.